I wonder what the neighbors are up to. Let's check next door. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs and the Idiot Quilter, and welcome to my weekly vlog for August the 14th, 2023, and it's vlog number 325. Hope you had a good weekend. Um, the weekend was not bad. Saturday it rained here. Um, we had company. Talk more about that later. And wanted to use the deck, you know, been nice to have dinner out on the deck on a nice warm summer evening, but that didn't happen <laughs> because it was nice and wet. But Sunday was really nice, uh, though, and I don't know what to, this week's going to bring, but we shall see. So I hope you had a good weekend wherever you were. So let's tear right into what I've been working on. This you have seen in bits and pieces. It's called the Cat Scratch Quilt by Art East Quilt Company. It is all now completely finished. You can see that I quilted it, and I quilted it with little kitty paws and swirls. Um, I really thought that was appropriate for this and I love the way it turned out. I love the whole quilt. It turned out great. Um, there were some issues I had and I talked about those last week on Idiot Quilter about the pattern and things. Not so much the pattern but the fact that it was short fabric but I made do and made it work. Um, here is a close-up of the quilting for you. There it is there. Lucy, my long arm, cooperated very nicely when I did this. No issues whatsoever. And there's the backing fabric as well. That picture's a little blurry. Um, sorry about that. But you can see the backing is very busy. And as a result, you really can't see the quilting, at least in a picture, especially a blurry picture, um, that well. But it's there. I can tell you that. So what am I working on now? Well, I got a lot of projects on the go. This one, I'm hoping to get some more of the pieces of this done today it's getting there i worked on it all day yesterday this is a table runner snowman so it's a christmasy wintry kind of table runner uh once it gets sewn together uh those big gaps between pieces between the red pieces um those are parts i still need to finish up on the embroidery machine and uh yeah so it's coming to uh getting you know it's coming to its end kind of a thing meaning finished um, and I love doing in the hoop applique, as you know. So, yeah. Um, other projects? Well, I have some gnome tote bags to make. And I'm going to have to make some more uh, fabric for those uh, bags. Quilted fabric. Got to get some things onto Lucy. Maybe later this week and make a batch of that again. Um, these tote bags are the ones that I'm going to be taking with me. Filled with lots of goodies for the participants at the retreat in December that I'm going to. Um, yeah, what else have I got? Oh, I've got the fabric now for a Christmas quilt that I've been wanting to make. Um, so I'd like to get started on that. And I've started designing another quilt of valor um, quilt right now. And if you saw the video so chatty on Friday, um, you heard all about the Quilts of Valor because I interviewed a representative of the Quilts of Valor uh, when I delivered to her the Quilt of Valor quilt that I just finished. Um, a little bit more about that tomorrow, but uh, check out the video. Um, that that lady that I visited and her husband, who's also a veteran, um, very nice people, very interesting uh, interview. Learned a lot, and it really has inspired me to support the Quilts of Valor program. Okay, so that takes me to YouTube channel of the week. Do you like meat? <laughs> Some of you don't. I know there's vegans out there and vegetarians. Okay, well, I'm not one of those. I like my meat. Um, and uh, it's always good to know, you know, different things about meat because in this day and age you don't know really what you're getting and i discovered this youtube channel which i find very interesting called butcher wizard and uh, he talks about various aspects of the meat i was gonna say meat market but that doesn't sound good uh, too good does it the meat industry so check this out <laughs> 
This week's YouTube channel of the week is one I stumbled upon when I was looking at some food videos on YouTube. Yes, I like to look at cooking and food videos on YouTube. And this one caught my attention because the individual that puts this up, and it's called Butcher Wizard, was talking about comparing frozen hamburger patties from Walmart. And, you know, I'm not a big fan of the frozen pre-made uh, hamburgers because, well, they taste like sawdust. Um, so that caught my interest and it was a very interesting uh, video. So I want to watch more of his videos in the future. Uh, as I said, it's called Butcher Wizard. And uh, let's just take a look here at what he's got going um, so far. He only he has a lot of subscribers and he has 43 videos on here. Um, let's take a look at his playlist to get a sense of what it is that he puts up on his YouTube channel. Uh, guide to Chuck Steaks, How to Cut, Store, and Sous Vide Cook, uh, sous -vide cook a Ribeye. Okay, well, Walter likes to do a lot of, of our food using the sous vide, so that's very uh, probably informative. Home Butcher Playlist and Beef Tenderloin Series. Um, his playlists don't seem to be very extensive, but he has a lot more videos. So if we go to the video one, he just doesn't have them all in playlists. Uh, this is the best budget steak you've never heard of. Uh, that's the one I saw. I ranked all the frozen hamburgers at Walmart. Cheap versus expensive date night dinner. Save money on meat every time you go to Sam's Club. Butcher reviews. Uh, I cut all these steaks from a 20 pound beef chuck roast, um, etc. So there's a lot here about meat, about butchering, about preparation of meat. So, you know, I don't know if he comes from professional butcher background or not. Um, I didn't really look into it that far. But nevertheless, it's definitely, and if you'll pardon the pun, food for thought. So check out The Butcher Wizard. So you will find the link for Butcher Wizard in the show notes below. You'll also find a link for what's coming up on Wednesday, which is our usual, um, Sewing with Stephanie and Stephen. Um, if you've never been part of our little group, uh, don't be shy. If you're free anytime on Wednesday between 9 to about 4 o'clock, uh, pop in, say hi, uh, spend a little time with us all doing whatever you want to do in sewing. And um, yeah, it's a great group. We're not a huge group, um, but that's okay. It's not quantity. It's quality. And uh, there are quality people there. Yes, they're all quality people and have great projects that they're showing us. Um, showcasing what they've been working on. Um, I find it when I find always inspiration from other people in some in a situation like this. So you will too. So I hope you can join us. Zoom link is below. And just so you know, it isn't a YouTube live. We do not record it. It is a private group, but all are welcome using the Zoom link that I have in the show notes. Okay, you will find a link to all of my friends YouTube channels so check them out if you haven't already and uh, yeah you also find a link to last week's a couple of last week's videos and that includes the one for so chatty uh, where I told you about the quilt of valor situation so do check that out okay so that takes me to looking out my front window today I already mentioned the uh, weather on the weekend. Today looks like it's going to be really nice. Uh, currently it is 15 degrees C, which is a little chilly, a little chilly, um, but you know, not bad. Um, I hate it when in the summer, in August or July, you get chilly days because that means, you know, it feels more like fall and I don't want to feel like fall yet. It's too soon. But you can see the sun is shining, the grass is green, the flowers are looking nice. Our Rose of Sharon, that's the bush with the purpley flowers off to the right, uh, is doing very nicely. Um, actually, it could use a bit of a trim, I think. Uh, but that's not my department. That's Walter's department. I don't garden because I kill things. The only thing I can grow are philodendrons. Um, but yeah, it looks it's looking like a nice day. And I think there isn't any rain until later in the week in the forecast. So be a good time to go somewhere. Have to see about that. Okay, so that takes me to what's pissing me off this week. Okay, nosy neighbors. 
not the ones I live next door to. Um, we have great neighbors on both sides of our house. And generally speaking, on the street alone, we've never had any problem in the 28 years that we've lived here with any of the neighbors. Um, they're all great. They keep up their property. They look after things. They're respectful. You know, it, it's a nice neighborhood. However, there are other neighborhoods in the city I live in that aren't so nice. Well, every neighbor, every city has that, right? But, you know, there's these apps that you can get. I don't know who creates them. I suspect the one I'm about to talk to you about, which is called Neighbors, uh, is probably up because of a real estate agent. Because there's some advertising on it. But basically... The essence of these is for, I guess, in a to create a sense of community. That's the positive side of it, amongst people who may not really know each other but live in the general area to each other. Okay, that sounds like a great idea, doesn't it? But no, <laughs> it is a unexpected source of humor, and when I say humor, I mean laughing at stupid people. Yeah. The things that are on this app that people write, I can't believe. One of the popular topics of discussion is somebody will write, I got up this morning, I looked out the window, and I saw a fire truck and an ambulance going down one, going down the street very fast. Does anybody know what's happening? What's going on? Then they speculate. Well, I don't know. There could have been an accident down in such and such. Oh, I don't know. Maybe there's a fire somewhere. Oh, there was probably fresh donuts at Tim Hortons. I don't know. Who cares? You know, unless it's happening in front of your house or right next door, who cares? Who knows? Why speculate? Why waste your time worried about that? There are a hundred different reasons why an ambulance, or not an ambulance, but a, a fire truck and a police car were ripping down the road. Lots of reasons. Why waste your time with it? And then they, they that's how rumors get started. They speculate. Oh, well, I heard this and I heard that. And is any of this true? No. Then they get all uptight about what their neighbors are doing. They remind you. There's one busybody lady on there who on a regular basis reminds people, it's Green Bin Pickup Day. Please put your bin away after they've picked it up. Don't leave it out on the curb. It's unsightly. Well, yeah, she's right, it is. But, you know, maybe people aren't right there sitting on their doorstep the moment that the green bin guys come and dump it and run right out and get rid of their green bin and put it away. Maybe they're at work. I mean, unless it's piling up, like there's 12 of these things there overflowing with garbage and the raccoons are there having a smorgasbord. Why get all uptight about it? Why do you need to remind the neighbors? I mean, after all, they remembered to put it out, right, on the day they're supposed to. I'm sure they're capable of remembering to bring it back in. Or, there is some kind of plant, or in some cases it's a bug, in my backyard. I don't know what it is. Snap, they take a picture of it and post that. Does anybody know what this is? Should I be worried? It's a bloody weed. It's a bloody bug. Bugs and weeds happen. Don't get your knickers in a knot. Now, all these things these people talk about are trivial. And in many cases, they're just stupid. I mean, if you are using the app to display your stupidity, it's working. Yes, but the rest of the stuff doesn't really matter. Okay, if your next door neighbor came up with a cure for cancer or uh, a plan for uh, getting the homeless off the streets or for solving world hunger, yeah, Worthy stuff to talk about. But this other stuff is ridiculous. And it goes on and on and on. Now you're going to say, well, then why are you paying any attention to it? Why don't you just delete the app? Because I like the humor. <laughs> the unintentional humor. The, some of the things they say are just so stupid. Would you like an example? I can pull my phone out right here now. And I'll just go to the app. And well, yes, and of course there's... Uh, messages. Now, some of them are about wildlife, like this one. Poor bunny. I'm wondering if anyone out there is a veterinarian or works with a vet and may have been some have seen something like this. Okay, it is sad. This poor bunny, you can see it down on his little nose on his cheek. He's got a growth. Okay, 
However, he is a wild animal. And apparently, I learned something from this app, whether it's true or not, but people are saying, just leave the bunny alone, Nate, let nature run its course. Uh, if you try to catch the bunny, one person said, rabbits have very, very weak hearts and they scare easily and can die. So the next time I see bunnies in my backyard munching away at something, I'll just sneak up behind them and go, boo, and they'll just keel over dead. Well, no, I wouldn't do that because I think bunnies are cute. Um, but, you know, like, all right, it, it's one thing to be concerned about this poor bunny, but what are you going to do about it? But that's that one's maybe not quite as stupid as as others. But let me see if I can find another stupid one on here. Um, sometimes there's things on here you learn. Like, I'm just looking at a post right now where someone says... Value Village is actually owned by a large American company called Sabres, which is one of many corporations owned by conglomerate TBG Capital. It is on the stock exchange and has no connection to any nonprofits. While well, some places say they share their nonprofit partners, if you check about us under Sabres, they admit that there's no such partners. Okay, that's interesting. And because we have talked before on here about charities and whether or not, you know, money is going to help people, Value Village is one of those. And, you know, it's always been associated that you're donating something where money is going to, you know, to help out like the Diabetes Foundation or something like that. I don't know. I'd have to explore this further. That's interesting. So there is some stuff here that is kind of interesting. It's not all completely stupid. Um... There's one here that's trending. Is anybody having problems with their gardens? Some of the neighbors are complaining about rats in the neighborhood. We are infested with rats outside. Anyone else having problems? Okay, what do you mean by an infestation? You saw one rat? Um, haven't seen, heard this on the local news or anything that your city is being overrun by rats. Run, 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 run. Haven't seen any myself and we live right on a forest. So we, we do have turkeys, coyotes, skunks, squirrels, chipmunks, um, raccoons, bunnies. You know, haven't seen a rat yet. Don't want to. But, you know, it, it's the way these some people write this as though it's the end of the world. And everybody chimes in. No signs of any around my home. There must be a food source keeping them around. Eliminate the food source and they will leave. Maybe you left your green garbage can, your green bin, out, and they've been eating in that, and you're the cause of it. You should have heated what's-her-name's advice and get that right in the house really quick. Um. So, you know, it's the little things. Um, Let me see if I can find another really hilarious one. Uh, you know, when you want, when you can't. Um, oh, they complain about businesses and things like that. Some of them are legit kind of complaints. Like, well, thank you for the information. Uh, cause you know, you want to know who, who you can trust for like to come into your home and fix something or something like that. So it does serve a purpose, but for the most part, um, it's just a lot of people, you know, bitching about nothing and getting the, everybody else upset. Because for some reason, when something's in print, people believe it, right? Now, there was one lady on here who, and she changes her name all the time. She's talking about, oh, she's on hard times. She really needs this, that, and the other thing. She has, she's an un, uh, she's a single mom. She has four children, um, all under the age of seven, um, she has an infant. She can't afford to buy formula, um, all this kind of stuff. So some people reach out and go, well, yeah, I can help you out. I'll, I'll donate some food or something like that, some diapers or whatever. And then the lady comes back and goes, yeah, okay, uh, I need this brand of this, or I need this particular thing. My child won't eat this kind of thing. Uh, yeah. S there's even been a couple who have started GoFundMe things, and they're fake as well. So, you know... There's always people who might use an app like that uh, for, you know, keep other people informed on things in their neighborhood. That might be a good thing. But there's a lot more out there who are just writing stupid things, 
really unintentionally funny things, or they're using it as a scam. Okay, and that pisses me off when they do that. I don't know if the intention of this app when it was created, and they're everywhere. Uh, all neighborhoods have these now. Um, maybe the intent when they were first created was to bring together people who may have come from outside areas and moved into one area, bring them together as a community, like in the good old days where everybody knew everybody else on the street kind of thing. But that's not what it's being used for. It's being used primarily to bitch about things that really are not going to change life. Okay, not that much to worry about. I guess a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands. Yeah, so that's what's pissing me off this week. Okay, moving on to new products. What have I bought? Nothing. I bought some fabric. I'm not going to show that here. I'll show that on Idiot Quilter, but that's about it. So we can move right along to let's talk about what's growing in our under our grow lights and in our deck or on our deck. So here is a bad picture of grow light number one. Sorry, it's a little blurry from the lighting. Uh, but you can see we've got some lettuce popping up here, which is nice. Now, Walter's got some stuff in here. I think it's lettuce. I'm not sure. Uh, hasn't planted anything in these things yet. Got to get on with that. Um, he's cleaned up this area grow light number three and we've got some new peppers coming up there as well actually the peppers he took from this area and transplanted outdoors are doing really well including the tomato plants and he just the tomato plants were looking a little sickly and he read that they may have a lack of calcium so he bought some calcium put it in the ground and they are just booming now, so this is our outdoor lettuce and onion and one tomato or pepper plant over here. So you see lettuce is in, he's got lettuce in all these pots right in here. These are our onions doing very nicely. Um, and there's our rest of our garden out here and things are doing nicely. There's some little green peppers coming on here. Um, they won't be, I don't know how big they're going to get. Um, before the end of the season because they are a little late. Um, got more tomatoes coming. The squirrels are all licking their lips, just waiting for the moment when when we have the race. Who's going to get to the ripe ones first, the squirrel or us? I have a feeling the squirrel's going to win. And way down at the far end, there is a great big uh, green... You can't see it in this picture, but there is a great big green pepper on this one right here. So need to pluck that soon. Um, they're a little more wild looking this year out here. I don't know if it's because we started all these tomato plants. We started under the grow lights. Um, and yeah, they're a little bit on the wild side. Um, but nevertheless, it's greenery. I think it looks nice on the deck. It's nice to sit out there with all of this around you. Um, so yeah, I always miss when the end of the summer comes and we get into the cooler weather in the fall and this all dies down. I, I miss it because, um, you know, it's nice to see. Okay, so that takes me to the 3D corner. I have not been printing anything for the last few days. Um, I'm kind of caught up on the things I wanted to print, the things I've been printing since about January. Um, I've had a little trouble with the printers getting them leveled, but I think I've got that solved now. Um, so I'm thinking what what should i print next what and maybe something that's a little bit more challenging maybe something that you have to print multiple parts to and assemble i have not done anything like that maybe i need to branch out to that um we'll see but uh somebody asked me um or sent me a a message on a comment in one of my videos asking if i sold my gnome things and i said well, no, I don't. I don't have an Etsy store or anything like that. And the reason for that is they do take a long time to print. So suddenly you show something in an Etsy store, I could be sold out of it before I even have enough, you know, for other people. So that would discourage people from ordering it. Two, it's a hobby. I do it for fun, not for profit. Um, and anytime you start attaching a dollar amount to anything that you like doing, it becomes a job and I don't need a job. I'm retired. And the biggest factor out of them all is the shipping. 
and everybody knows, and I've, I've talked about this many, many times, to send anything anymore out, it's just astronomical in what it costs. Um, even for something like a little plastic gnome. I mean, I sent uh, a little tiny 3D printed object that weighed nothing. Like literally, it weighed nothing. In an envelope, I was small enough to send it a standard size envelope, um, pretty much, but it was going to the States. It cost me, with tracking on it, Fifteen dollars, fifteen Canadian dollars to send this for nothing, for nothing. If I hadn't gotten the tracking on it, it would have been a little cheaper, but only cheaper by about two bucks. So, you know, I don't know how these people that have Etsy stores are doing it. Now, maybe they have a vendor's license or something, and maybe if you have a vendor's license, maybe the post office gives you a deal because you're a, technically a business. I don't know. But for me, for now, that's not going to happen. Um, I, it, I'm a hobbyist when it comes to 3D printing, and I think I'm going to keep it that way. So, sorry. I guess my advice to, well, to that person was get a 3D printer, make your own, because you can, you know. So, yeah. Okay, so nothing there to show you. So let's talk about blasts from the past trips. This is a new segment still in Australia 2016, our first trip there. Uh, no, was that our first trip? Yes, that was our first trip. And this is um, the Hunter Valley, and the Hunter Valley has a lot of wineries in it. Um, this will be a two-parter. So this is part one of Hunter Valley, December 28th, 2016. <laughs> Okay, so today we're doing a wine tour of the Hunter Valley and we're on the tour bus right now heading towards there. And uh, we just filled out our forms for gourmet lunch with wine pairing. So that sounds quite good. We'll see how it goes. You might see a few horses, a few cows, a few sheep or goats or other uses of the land. And um, it's, it's one of the you know, nice little rural areas that people come to retire to quite often from the big cities. Now, about a 30 minute drive to our right is the city of Newcastle, which is the second largest city in New South Wales with a population of 2 million people. So 30 minutes to our right is a city where there's 2 million people living and working. And we're heading from here in a north-westerly direction into the Hunter Valley. Named after Captain John Hunter, who was one of the early governors of Sydney. He explored this area back in 1797. And whilst he didn't discover um, an area for grapes, that was in the 1840s that that was discovered, he did discover coal. And another hour in front of us, we have some pretty big coal mines here in the upper Hunter Valley. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I suffer from OCD. <laughs> Everything must be neat and tidy and in its place. So this home on our left-hand side really annoys me because it's a massive home, which that doesn't annoy me, but, and it's symmetrical, all right? But look down the driveway. The driveway doesn't line up with the front of the house. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. That really annoys me. <laughs> and who would have a house with, like that? They've spent a lot of money building that. Number one, who would put it at the bottom of a hill? That should be on the top of a hill somewhere. And who wouldn't line the driveway up? <laughs> so, wine is a very personal thing. Wine, I might think, is a beautiful wine. You think vinegar and vice versa. Everyone's palate's different and everyone has a different maturity in their palate when it comes to wine drinking and that's okay, you know, that's what makes us, uh, what makes us different. So, some of the wines today, some of you will be going, wow, that's really good. Others of you will be going, oh my goodness, that's the worst wine I've ever <laughs> tasted. 
probably not that bad, but you get the concept of what I'm, I'm trying to say. Now, you don't have to swallow all the wine. Of course, it's a great thing to do that, but if you do want to spit it out, there will be spittoons in all of the, uh, the wine tasting, and you can spit it out or pour whatever's left in your glass uh, into those spittoons. Wine these days uh, also, you know, in the old days, white wine went with white meat, like fish and chicken, whereas red wine went with red meat. Let me tell you, that doesn't happen today. And you can get some very lovely white wines that are beautiful with a good steak, and some lovely red wines that are beautiful with a, a, a nice grilled piece of fish. So it's, um, it's not one of those hard and fast rules anymore. You'll also discover here in Australia, and, you, and this will become obvious when I say it, but it's not obvious to start with, is what we do a lot in Australia is we chill our red wines. Now that sounds really weird, doesn't it? How we would chill a red wine, because you've probably grown up in a place that might be a little bit colder than Australia, and the last thing you would do is chill a red wine. They're meant to be, you know, open and let breathe and warm up and all that sort of thing. But red wine is supposed to be drunk at room temperature. But the room temperature they're talking about is European room temperature, which is a lot colder than here. So on a, a hot summer's day, nice bottle of red, you might put it in the fridge for a, two hours and it just reduces the temperature a little bit on the red and then go through the same process, let it open, let it breathe for a little bit, pour it, have whatever you want. But just having, you know, the wine not be warm makes it actually really enjoyable to drink in Australia. And the wineries will be talking about chilling the red. This is for the wines. Has anybody been here before, by the way? No. Uh, who's from overseas? Just about everybody. Mm -hmm. Got a couple of lay ones from Perth. From Perth, yeah. Yep. Okay, so my name's Ross and I'm the owner of the business here along with my son. So Ernest Hill Wines is just a small um, family owned and operated boutique vineyard and winemaking concern here in the Hutter. And just to give you a bit of background, uh, we purchased a property here in 1999, so coming up to 17 years ago. Um, but the vineyard itself was first planted back in the early 70s. So a lot of the vines here are, are well over 40 years old, older than just about everybody here. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll let you make your own <laughs> okay. um, Which is good for the quality of the wine because as vines get older, they tend to produce a bit less but what they produce is better quality. I say a bit like people. <laughs> I don't want to offend the young people. So, um, yeah, you get a bigger root system supporting a fewer number of bunches, so those bunches get more nutrients and so forth and develop um, better flavors and so forth. So all your iconic wines like um, your um, Hill of Grace and Grange and so forth are, are made from old, low yield vineyards. Okay, so we special, uh, specialise in the traditional hunter varieties of Semillon, Chardonnay and Shiraz. We've also got a Bordello on the list for you to taste today. Uh, nice rosé, so we've got a, some refreshing wines here as well. Um, a couple of reds uh, from the 15 and 14 vintages. And does anybody drink sweeter style wines at all? Come on, don't be embarrassed and say that. Everybody does. <laughs> now, I've got a couple of light styles of sweet wine to show you as well. Okay. Um, so, if you've got any questions as I go through the tasting, um, please don't hesitate to ask, and I'll do my best to answer them for you. And it's like, why do you have any questions? Okay. Rightio, it's a wonderful Okay, so we're at Ernest Hill Winery. And uh, this was our first stop today on the wine tour, and you just heard the, uh, the opening introduction from the wine master here. We tried about eight different wines, and all of them were quite good. Um, but this is the only place you can get them, I guess. Uh, so we bought a couple, um, and uh, yeah, it was very nice, uh, very nice wine tasting.
over to our left towards the Broke Mountain, that you can see on our left hand side. Um, and we'll be having lunch in the foothills of those mountains. The Broke Mountains are the rim or the edge of an extinct volcano. So this whole area was a volcano. And as the volcano eroded away, it created this rich red volcanic loam as the soil. And that is why this area is ideal, apart from the climate, but the soil is ideal for the growing of the great fire. Coming up on our left hand side is the Cessnock Airport and there is a commuter service operating from Sydney up to Cessnock but a lot of people who own their own aircraft quite often fly up here and land at Cessnock and then use the local shuttle buses to explore the vineyards in that and if you're really uh, wealthy you can have your own helicopter and you land at the vineyards so you pick a winery you land your helicopter at that winery have a few drinks where you can't as the pilot but if you're really rich you've got a pilot that works for you so you can go drinking yeah great with that here on the right hand side we have the crown plaza resort and golf course golf is a popular sport in australia and per capita per head of population we have more golf courses than any other country in the world if you happen to play a game of golf during your time here i do recommend that you wear two pair of socks just in case you get a hole in one. <laughs> See, they're better after alcohol, aren't they? <laughs> More alcohol. <laughs> oh, that's sad. Now we're going to take the next road on our left-hand side, the Broke Road, heading towards the Broke Mountains and the town of Broke. So next week, I will have the second part of that video. Okay, events in the past week. Well, I've already mentioned about delivering the Quilt of Valor. That was great experience. Um, opened my eyes to, you know, how great this particular charity is. And I want to do more Quilts of Valor. Um, that has now become my charity of choice, I think. So anyways, if you want to know more about that, uh, tune in to So Chatty, as I already said. We had company this weekend, a couple of friends of ours that live in Toronto. They live right downtown Toronto, and we usually get together with them twice a year. Um, we have known them for, yeah, pretty much about 40 years. Yeah. And so it's always nice to see them. Uh, we always catch up on what's going on in our lives. Never have a, a quiet moment, actually, when they're here because we just talk up a storm, drink up a storm. Um, they always show up with a liquor store full of wine and they buy nice wines, really nice wines. We send a lot of them home with them. Um, because yeah, we have wine here as well. I mean, we definitely appreciate the thought and everything like that. Um, they brought a really nice bottle of red wine. Um, couldn't tell you the name of it right now, but it was good. It was really nice. We had that with dinner. So we had a really nice, uh, visit. They were here overnight, came Saturday, left Sunday. And um, yeah, so we're going off to their place for an early Christmas dinner uh, in the uh, first on, in the first week of December, I think. We actually did that last year as well. It's kind of nice. Um, you know, they don't have a lot of family anymore. They are older gentlemen, our age, slightly older than us, not much, you know couple of years that's it and uh you know their parents are gone our parents are gone um they do have uh one of them has a sister um so there's some nephews and nieces but they're all grown up they're all adults they're all in, in the one case they're all over the world um that kind of thing so you know we're getting together for christmas and of course uh early because we'll be gone at christmas time We'll be off to Georgia. So, yeah. 
So that's going to be quite nice. So that comes up in December. And December's coming fast, people. I know it's only August. But if you are someone who likes to make your Christmas gifts and things like that, you should have started those at least a month ago. <laughs> I did. And I'm going to be continuing on it. So, you know, it's one project after another. Uh, so, but it keeps you. It keeps life moving and it keeps you off the streets. <laughs> Get a hug. It keeps you off the streets. Kind of a thing. So, yeah. Anything else coming up this week then? Let me think. No. Oh, there was an event yesterday. Um, I'll talk maybe a little bit more about it tomorrow on Idiot Quilter because it was a so long but it was with uh, Shannon of Slay Arts. Uh, that was fun. Um, she was trying something new, uh, new to her, and I think it worked out very nicely uh, with it. And I think she's having another one um, in another couple of weeks or whatever. And if you're interested in that kind of thing, you'll want to go over and check out Slay Arts, and you will find a link for Slay Arts in my show notes below too. So I did that yesterday as well um, after my company left. And yeah. So, nothing else coming up this week that I can think of. Yes, we're still fighting with the insurance company. Well, it's not really a fight. We just don't hear from them. So, today marks six weeks ago that Walter had the car accident. Six weeks ago. And we still haven't settled with the insurance company. It's ridiculous. Every time Walter calls and goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're working on it. And, of course, we haven't heard anything about our window situation. <sighs> yeah. Isn't it nice? Customer service, not. So, anyways, I hope you're not suffering from any of those kind of things right now. Hope you have a great week, and we'll see you later. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye for now.